So this video covers sections 4-4 in your book on the multiplication rule and this is pages 36 through 39 in your note-taking guide. So two events are independent if the outcome of one event does not affect the probability of the other. Therefore, two events are then dependent if the outcome of one event affects the probability of the other. So let's look at a couple examples here. So we want to classify these two events as either independent or dependent. So we're going to let event A be the event that it rains today and event B is the event that I bring an umbrella with me to class. So what we need to think here is event A, if it rains today, is that going to make me more or less likely to bring an umbrella? Well yeah, if it rains today I'm more likely to remember my umbrella. So these do affect each other. A is going to affect B. So if A affects B we are dependent. So suppose you flip a coin and roll a die. Let event C be that you flip a head and event D be that you roll an even number. So now let's think about these two events. If I flip a coin and get a head, is that going to make me more or less likely to roll a die and get an even? Well, the, these two events are completely independent. And by independent, I mean my coin isn't going to affect my die, and my die isn't going to affect my coin. So you select two cards from a deck without replacement. Let event E be that the first card is red, and let event F be that the second card is black. Alright, so this one's a little tougher. So when I pull my first card and I get a red, well is that going to make it more or less likely that I get a black. Well these would affect each other so let's think about this. I'm gonna start off here and we're gonna have 26 reds and 26 blacks in a standard deck of cards. So let's say here on my first event, event E, I do get a red. So now because I got a red, here's the, my red card over here that I've drawn. So now there's only 25 reds left in that deck. So do you see this, if I got a red on that first card, well the second card, the probability of me getting a black is going to be 26 out of a total of 51. Now let's say we did this differently. This time let's suppose my first card is black. So if I get a black on my first card, well now I chose one of these so there's only 25 left. So I can ask the same question, what's the probability now of me choosing a black card on my second card? Well there's 25 card, black cards left out of 51. So do you see those two are different? So here these are going to be dependent because if I pull a red card or not, the color of that first card is going to affect how many remain in the deck. So now let's suppose you have two children without replacement. Let event G be that the first child is a boy and let event H be that the second child is a boy. Would having a boy on your first child affect whether or not you have a boy or a girl on your second child? Well no it would not. So these are independent. So if I know two events are independent, so we're going to look at two cases in this section. The first case is when I know my two events do not affect each other. So they are independent. So let's write that. So do not effect. 
right, so if they do not affect each other, then the probability of A occurring and B occurring, and this symbol that you see here, this intersection symbol means and. So let's write that down here. This means and. So this would be, we have two events, the probability of the first occurring and the second occurring. Well, to find that, I'm going to take the probability of my first event, and I'm going to denote that the probability of A, and then I'm going to multiply that by the probability of B. So let's look at an example, see if we can make sense of this. So we're going to come back to that example that we just said was independent, where we roll a die and flip a coin. So if I cl flip a coin, I have two options, a tails and a head. And if I roll a die, I have six options. I could get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So suppose that you're going to flip this coin and roll a die. What is the probability that you flip a head and roll a five? I'm going to do some notation over here. Let's let H represent a head, and I'm going to let five represent that I roll a five. So I want to know what's the probability that I get a head and, that's what this notation means, I get a five. So let's come over here. The probability of a head, so let's think about just that first event. Well, I only have two options here. So the probability of a head would be a half. Then I can look, well, what's the probability that I roll a five? Well, here I have one, two, three, four, five, six options. So the probability that I roll a five would be one out of six. Now what we're interested in is where does it occur that I get a head and I rolled a five? Well hopefully you can see that that's going to be where these two overlap, which is going to be this space right here. We have two strategies. We could draw out the sample space like we did, and hopefully this model that I've just drawn over here it helps you see that this is the multiplication of two fractions. Or we can use this uh, rule that we've just generated. That's going to be the probability of the first one, which is that I get a head, times the probability that I roll a five. Well, the probability that I roll a head is a half, times the probability that I rolled a five was one-sixth. So this would give me a probability of one-twelfth. And hopefully you can see that in our picture. Of these, all these options, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. One out of those 12, or what I have here in green, is where we had both a head and a 5. So suppose that the probability that at least one student's mobile phone rings in class is 5% or 0 0.05. So suppose further that the probability that your professor's phone rings during class is 1% or 0.01. What is the probability that a student's phone ring and a professor's phone rings? So the first th question I need to ask myself is, are these two events independent? Well, yep, they actually are independent. You know, if someone decides to call you today, that's not going to affect whether or not someone calls me today. So because they're independent, we know that we can multiply the two probabilities. So I'm going to use an S here to represent that a student's phone ring. And I'm going to use the letter P to represent that your professor's phone ring. Our notation, we're interested in the probability that a student's phone rings and a professor's phone rings. Well, we just learned that if these are 
independent, we can multiply them. So this is going to be the probability that a student's phone rings times the probability that your professor's phone rings. So this is going to be 0 0.05 times 0 0.01. So this would result in 0 0.0005. So it's highly unlikely that both your phone rings and my phone rings. So next we want to know what's the probability that a professor's phone goes off but no student's phone goes off. Now this is a little more complicated. So to help us here we're going to come back to that representation that we just looked at. So let's say first of all we have that the, your professor's phone could either go off or the complement of that would be that my phone did not go off and we're going to denote that with a p bar and then our second event is for our students so either a student's phone could ring denoted by s or no student's phone rings we're going to call that s bar so the probability that your professor's phone rings is point zero one. So with this hopefully you could figure out well if one percent of the time my phone rings well that means 99 percent of the time my phone does not ring. And similarly if a student's phone rings five percent of the time then 95 percent of days we get through the class with no student's phone ringing. We want to know what's the probability that your professor's phone rings, well that happens here, yet no student's phone ring, well that happens here. So we're looking at this case down here. So we want the probability that a professor's phone rings and no student's phone rings. And I hope you understand my notation here. The P means my phone went off. The S bar means no student's phone went off. Well, that's going to be the probability that a professor's phone rings times the probability that no student's phone rings. So this is going to be 0 0.01 times 0.95. So this is going to be 0 0.0. 0.95. So in our next case, what is the probability that no phone rings in a given class? So here I'm in the case where my phone doesn't ring and then neither does a student's phone ring. So we're down here in this case. So here I want the probability that my phone doesn't ring and no student's phone ring. Well, we said these are independent, so we can multiply these two probabilities. This is the probability that my phone doesn't ring times the probability that no student's phone rings. Well, that's going to be 0 0.99 times 0.95, which equals 0.9405. In example three, we're going to use another representation, and this is the contingency table that we've looked at. So the table below gives the grade distribution of males and females in a statistics class. What is the probability that a randomly selected student is a male? The first thing that would help us here is to add up all these columns and get some totals. So I'm going to add two columns here. A total here for gender and a total down here for grade. And I'm going to put the grand total over here which should be the same for both which is going to be a total of 60 students. So what's the probability that someone is male? Well, I'm going to denote M 
as the event that we select a male. So the probability that a randomly selected student is male, well there are a total of 15 males out of 60 students. So that would be one fourth. So next we want to know what is the probability that a randomly selected student earns a C. So I'm going to get let the letter C represent that we earn a C. So the probability that a student gets a C, well there were how many C's here? 20 C's out of 60, which is a third. So what is the probability that a randomly selected student is both male and earns a C? Well, where does that happen? Where are we both male and earns a C? Well, that happens right here. So the probability that we're male and earn a C is going to be 5 out of 60 which is a twelfth. Well now we ask this question, are gender and grades earned independent? Well before we've taken a more um, commonsensical approach to whether things were independent, but now we want to use our mathematical definition here. So I know if two events are independent that the probability of them both happening that I'm male and I earn a C is the probability that we're male times the probability that I earned a C. Right? So if I'm independent, then this will hold. Well, let's see here. The probability of them both happening is a twelfth. The probability that we select a male is a fourth and the probability that we get a C is a third. All right. So if one twelfth is the same as a fourth times a third, then yes, we are in fact independent. And this does hold true because a twelfth equals a twelfth. So, yep, that worked. So yes, these are independent. So you select a card at random from a 52 card deck. What is the probability that it is red and a face card? All right, and here I'm going to let R represent that we're red and F represent that we're a face card. Well here this should be the probability that we're red times the probability that we're a face card. So the probability that I'm red, well hopefully you guys um, recall that half of them are red and half of them are black, so this would be one half. Right? So the probability that we're a face card, well there's three face cards out of 13 denominations. So we have a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. So of those 13, three of them are face cards. So therein the probability that they both occur would be 3 out of 26. And if this wasn't obvious, let's see if we could draw our picture here. We could have so again the probability that we're red well that's a half that happens up here and the probability that we're a face card, well that happens here. 
these 3 out of 13? Well, the probability that they both happen, well, that happens in these 1, 2, 3 spots out of 26. So suppose you have six children. What is the probability that they are all girls? So we just said that the probability of having a girl on your first child or a girl on your second child, these are independent. They're not going to affect each other. So we're in the, interested in the probability that we have a girl and a girl and a girl. for a total of six girls. Well, because these are independent, we can just multiply them. So that's the probability that my first child is a girl times my second child, and so forth. Well, this is just going to be a half times a half times a half times which is going to equal 1 over 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 1 out of 64. So in example 6, suppose that 35 of my students own a Macintosh, 50 own a PC, and 5 own both a Mac and a PC. Then I have 15 students who own neither. What is the probability that a randomly selected student owns a Mac and a PC? Well, the first part, how many students own both a Mac and a PC? Well, there are five students that own a Mac and a PC. So the probability that we own a Mac and a PC. Well, that's five students out of, well, how many students am I teaching here? Well, here's what most of you guys are going to do, which is incorrect. You would just add up, well, I have 35, 50, 5, and 15. So if I add those up, I would get 85, 90, 105 students. But see, I ended up counting some people two or three times. Because see, these five here are included in the others. So one way to represent this is to draw a Venn diagram. So I'm going to put my Mac students over here, my PC students over here, and my, my Mac and PC are going to go here where I overlap. So I have five here. Well, I also know that 15 students have neither, so I'm going to put these 15 students outside. So here, if I know a total of 35 have Macintoshes, and five of those also have a PC, well, there's 30 folks out here that own a Mac but don't have a PC for a total of 35. Similarly, five of these students have both. 50 own a PC. Well, that means there's 45 left out here that own a PC but not a Mac. So now let's look at these numbers and see if it's a little easier to tell how many students we have. So if I add these guys up, I get 95. So the probability that I have a Mac and a PC is going to be 1 out of 19.